You know, <laughs> um, it's always safe to say, I suppose, when a play is running on Broadway, that the majority of the people watching on television, by definition, haven't seen it. Of course. Because mm. how could that many million people? Um, and, and this is one of those cases where there's no way that you're the person I saw on the stage. Um, and I know that isn't the, the goal of acting, to simply disguise yourself, but it's simply a miracle in the case of a great actor like yourself that, um, besides all the thrilling things you do, that there's no apparent similarity anywhere that I can see mm. between you and, and everything I saw on the stage at Amadeus. Mm. Is, is, is that, have you had that experience with other people? Can you I've, meet I've, someone it's, and it's, say... It's very unnerving, and perhaps you feel it a little bit, to, mm -hmm. to uh, have related strongly to a performance and assume that uh, that is revealing a great deal about the real man. Sure. And then you suddenly meet the real person and you're slightly at a loss because uh, mm -hmm. he doesn't sound the same, look the same, or behave the same, or move the same, any of those things. However, that being so, I promise you that the, the character of Antonio Salieri, who you were looking at for two hours in Amadeus, uh, was played by me and does mm -hmm. contain a lot of me in him. Um, that's sure. part of, uh, of acting and, and I think a great part. I, I, when I started off acting, not having had any formal training, just having played a lot of parts at university, I thought acting was all about putting on beards and moustaches and fancy costumes and uh, doing funny walks and funny voices, voices and doing everything to disguise oneself. Mm -hmm. The sort of thing Olivier did when he was a young man. Well. Uh, if you ask him uh, what happened, he'll say that halfway through his career he realized that he didn't need that false nose and he didn't need those false calves he used to wear, you know, underneath his tights to build up his legs. Oh yeah, there's a word for those, I think. There's false it. calves. That's it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you don't, need, you don't need the extra heel on your shoe. You are what you are and you go out onto a stage uh, uh, using what you have been using all your life because mm -hmm. that is that is the thing which I think in the end is much more potent than something temporary like a, a quick moustache or yeah. a quick funny look or a funny walk. So actually when I was being Salieri I, I did look remarkably like myself but there was something about the words and there was something about the inner uh, intensity which I brought to them which deceived you into thinking that uh, Mm -hmm. I and Celieri are not alike, but actually we are quite alike, even though I don't go around trying to murder people, which he yeah. did. Well, I suppose it stands to reason that an actor gets whatever he uses from inside himself. If not, then where does it come from? Well, I, I, there are a number of actors, and I was one of them when I was, was younger, who, who looked anywhere mm -hmm. except inside myself. And I think once, once actors should not generalize, I'm just talking about myself. Mm -hmm. um, once I realized that I had inside myself everything that was required for almost every part ever written, uh, even uh, as an extreme a character as Macbeth, who is a mass murderer, thank you, uh, or, um, or any extreme person, good or bad, once you realize that the potential to be that is inside yourself, then acting becomes uh, easier, it becomes releasing, and uh, you become your own psychiatrist in a way. Is everybody theoretically born with all those potentials in them, or...? I, th I believe so, yes. Yeah. And uh, it's um, the veneer of civilization and, and, and upbringing and the restraints which we put upon ourselves, or have put on us, uh, on us by, by society and, and habit, are very easily broken through. Mm. I mean, the stories of people in extremism, in uh, concentration camps or locked up and tortured for, you know, a couple of days, break all those things down very, very quickly, and people are revealed to be shambling wrecks or, or, or whatever is required by the people who are trying to change them. And I yeah. think you think you can, with a little diligence and searching, and the help of a playwright who gives you words and uh, things to use your imagination on, you can reveal to yourself that, uh, yes, you have enormous potential. Is it particularly healthy in any way to... Um call upon the murderer in yourself when you play Macbeth? Is it well, it has two effects. Um, uh, one, in that uh, I sympathize with real life murderers. I mean, I, I, I see that uh, they haven't been as lucky as most of us to feel the constraints of, of upbringing and, and, and personality. And they are uh, 
they are abnormal, but uh, they are not all that different from me, and therefore I'm not one of those people who goes about saying the way to deal with murderers is to hang them, because I think, well, I might be the next candidate for that treatment. Uh, and the other thing is perhaps having indulged uh, a few fantasies that do creep around in the back of the brain. I mean, we must all at one point in our lives have thought, I want to stop that by killing it, mm -hmm. even if it's only a, a dog that's yapping at the heels. Um, maybe an actor releasing that energy in rehearsal and those fantasies in performance uh, will not be as inclined as other people to release them in real life. I, that's just a fervent hope. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think playing a murderer uh, makes you think more and more about how you might be a murderer in real life, in other words. <laughs>